Hey, it's Rick, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, from time to time, I put out some videos on things that I may put together, some little small projects, uh, maybe even a little larger project. This project isn't going to take a lot of mechanical ability. I tried to shorten it up and make it as easy as possible for myself and for also people that I'm going to share this video for. Look, I'm not going to put any fancy intro into this video or anything. I'm just going to tell you that if there's any information that I really need to put on this video, I'll put it on the, under the video on YouTube and you can check it out. There may be some links um, to some of the products I may showcase and sometimes I may just talk about it on the video and that's about it. All right, let's get to it. All right, we're in uh, COVID-19. We've been in it for four months now and can't really get a lot of things here in the States. Uh, we're out of a lot of stuff. Factories are shut down. Uh, people aren't working. Things have really been slowed down tremendously. I mean, now in the States, we may be doing a lot better than a lot of you around the world. And I hope you're all doing well at this time. But I'm going to just share this with you. I went to my local uh, hardware store, big box store, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot. And what would I could gather up right now because everything's all bought out because of other projects that people are doing at home. And you can't buy much stuff that's uh, pre-made these days. My wife decided she needed a uh, table for our deck. It's been coming for a while. I haven't been feeling too good for the past couple of years or whatever. So I've kind of put this project off and um, it's time to go ahead and do it. Uh, we tried to buy just a regular table, you know, that would seat maybe six for our deck. Of course, we're not entertaining or anything, but just for us to be able to sit outside or whatever and, uh, you know, have our meals. And we couldn't find anything. You know, of course, everything's made in China. That's kind of shut down now. Um, and plus, some of those uh, China goods, let's be honest, are not the greatest in quality. So she asked me if I could build her one. My building ability isn't as great these days. Um, it was a little bit better when I was younger, but I'm going to try to make this as simplified as possible so that I can do it and also you can do it. So we went there and they were out of a lot of material. I need 2x8 wood. There wasn't a 2x8 wood. There wasn't any treated wood. There were some assortments of 2x4s. And then we're going to put some stain on it anyway. So I figured, okay, I'll just get regular pine wood if that's what they got. And they had these 10 footers here and they're 2x8x10. So that means it's two inches in the thickness here by eight inches wide by 10 feet long. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use these as my main base for my table. And then I'm also going to cut a little bit shorter because we don't need a 10 foot table. I'm looking at maybe around six foot. So they give me like four foot left over for maybe stringers to go ahead and reinforce it underneath. I'm not going to use any of these fancy uh, dowels or biscuit joiners or any of that. I don't have any of that kind of stuff. I've got basic tools. You may have basic tools, so I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. So the theory behind this, oh, since this is 10 foot long, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll measure out about six foot. So that comes right there where my foot is. And then, like I said, that's going to give me about another four foot of stringers left over. Now the stringers are going to go long ways. And what that means is you're going to have the table say as wide like this. Then you're going to need stringers to go ahead and put those boards together. We're going to lay all the boards out flat and then put the stringers running this way. Put our screws in and that'll be our tabletop. That's the theory behind it. We'll see if it works out. So these are the tools that I'm going to be able to use because it's basically all I have. I've got a circular saw. I've got a hand saw. This is major old school. <laughs> going to work a little harder. Need something to measure with, tape or a roll. A cordless drill to go ahead and drill your holes and put your screws in. If you're doing this project, we're going to use two and a half inch Phillips screws, something to mark with, and of course the old trusty Phillips screwdriver. Once this is built, my plan is I'm going to go ahead and put some hairpin legs on it, and they're going to be the three prong variety, and they're going to be 28 inches, and then with the deck, it probably gives us close to 29, 30 inches, depending on whether I go on the stringers or I go underneath the table. So those are the supplies. Now we'll start building it. I'm going to try to edit this video as short as possible because I know a lot of people don't like to sit here and watch a long video. <laughs> okay, so we laid out our boards uh, face down. You're going to want your good looking part of the board that you want up on the top of your table. We're building this in reverse. Got a straight edge down there lining our boards up. And I'm going ahead and I've laid out a mark over here. As you can see right there, that's my cut ends. And then those are going to be the stringers that are actually going to go long ways that are going to tie in this way. 
So since, like I said, we didn't have the material, we went ahead and bought larger boards that were in stock, and then we'll use those as the stringers that are going to reinforce it underneath. So if you didn't understand what I meant by leaving them face down, the good sides of your boards, like you may have a lot of knots and you may have some nicks and uh, dents and stuff, and maybe even little um, cut marks that you didn't like from the factory. Instead of having to sand them all out, put your good side down, and then when you put your stringers on here, you're gonna flip it up this way, that's now going to be your top surface. All right, so here's our cut lines. We're going to go ahead and cut this with a sawzall, jigsaw, or the circular saw, or just the hand saw. Make your cut right there. And make sure you wear your PPE, your proper uh, personal protective equipment, glasses, gloves, whatever it is you need. All right, so what people say is put a piece of masking tape down here or painter's tape over your cut line. That way the board doesn't fray. Whether it works or not, I don't know. We're going to go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and make our cut. All right, I'll show you this one cut, and then that's it. Okay, so now you can see how the tabletop is starting to shape up. I've gone ahead and I've squared up all my boards. I've sanded down uh, what I needed to uh, for initial prep. I went ahead and stepped back a little bit for these stringers. I'm going to call them stringers, supports, whatever you want. I don't know what, what the technical uh, term is. Like I said, I'm just uh, building this table how I feel like I can build it um, to uh, my ability. You want a straight edge here, go ahead and square those edges up. And you can leave a little bit of reveal here if you want to. That way, if it doesn't come out as straight as you want, you can strike a line and now you can go ahead and uh, saw these all down in one line which will make it easier for you but my cuts actually came out pretty decent factory cuts aren't bad not for a table outside uh, we want a little bit of a rustic look to it so this is what I've come up with I'm gonna have the four stringers here you got one two three four that should be plenty of support we're gonna put two screws in each one That'll support it down on the deck. If you had uh, biscuit joiners or you had dowels, you would go ahead and dowel these together and you wouldn't need these stringers. But for just the average novice builder, this is what I'm gonna put on there. I've seen people do uh, two by fours, but since I use the 10 footers, I use the uh, scrap left over that I allowed for, and that's gonna be my stringers and that's gonna make a nice heavy duty tabletop. So that's about where we are now. We'll go ahead, we'll pre-drill all our holes here, and then we'll go ahead and we'll sink our screws in, and then we'll go ahead and we'll use a hole saw here like this a round hole saw you could use a, um, a jigsaw I guess if you have a long enough blade or a um, um, sawzall if you just put a pilot hole in there and go around with a sawzall but I'm going to use the uh, hole saw and that's going to be a hole for our, uh, our outdoor umbrella and that'll be one of the other steps I could put another stringer there and even make it even more stiffer but this table is going to be heavy enough um, I have enough problems. I'm going to need probably some people to help me probably lift this, believe it or not, and put it on my deck. But it's probably above my rated capacity that I'm going to be able to lift. Okay, so after we've pre drilled our holes, got the screws lined up, and you just go ahead and tap them in just below the surface there. And that's going to stiffen that whole top up. Yeah, we'll just continue right on down the table. So now you can see all the screws are uh, screwed in there on the stringers. And the table's now assembled. That's the bottom part. And we're going to flip it over and do the top part. So now after the table was completed, after you saw the first step, we're doing what they call a uh, shishugi ban, I think it is. Uh, it's a Japanese um, art of, uh, I guess, protecting wood. It's a wood protectant. Is What they do is they burn the outer portion of the wood so that you don't put any stain on there for exterior surfaces or um, any kind of protectant. Now when you do an actual shishugi ban, you're supposed to burn it until it's actually completely black and then you take a brush and you scrape off the uh, carbon. This is more more of a just a burned wood type of um, a look like for aesthetics this is what my wife wanted to do she started this table actually this is all her but I'm going to show you how you do it you get yourself just a regular propane bottle with a little burner tip here for just like if you're doing plumbing um, fittings or something like that turn on you see that blue tip We'll take an area, she's done most of this table, but I'll just show you. Here's a white area right in here. And you just want to put that right on the surface there and just lightly drag it along.
And don't panic if it gets too dark in an area. You can go over it and sand off that uh, darker part. Or take like a uh, burlo pad, an abrasive pad, like a scrubby pad or something and just uh, knock off some of that darkness. Now, once this is completed, then it's going to be sealed with like a uh, polyurethane uh, so it can go outside. But this could be a pretty attractive uh, table just the way it is now to go outside once it's stained. Now I've seen some people use a colored stain also, like thin it out and put it on there to give it just maybe a different color if you want it colored, if you don't like this, uh, you know, kind of um, dark uh, brown look. But just try it yourself, it's um, kind of foolproof. I don't think you could really make a mistake too bad that you can't correct. Like I guess that with just a little bit of light sanding. And I'm just going over some of these areas uh, that she did prior. She did a wonderful job on it. I think she just was getting tired and probably missed some of these. Maybe little lighter spots that you can blend in. But hey, you know, it's like art. Okay, so here's the top here. Uh, we put the uh, polyurethane on, brushed on. This is three coats. And since I didn't show it, I will flip this table over. The underside isn't done yet. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the underside. This is going to be outside, and we want to make sure it weathers. You can see there it almost looks like glass. All right, so now we're going to do the underside of the table. Um, the aesthetics of the underside of the table really isn't as important as the top part of the table, of course. You just want to protect it from the elements. Or, um, you know, if it's a dining table or something like that, you're not really going to see it. But you want to kind of do it so it'll blend in, uh, for sure, with the top. So when you uh, use your uh, polyurethane, it um, doesn't matter what company you use here. I'm using Minwax right now. This is what we could get from our big box store. You want to lightly stir your poly up, um, bring the bottom up to the top. You don't want to create a lot of air bubbles because the air bubbles will actually show up in the table itself. So just lightly stir it. Now there's a, lots of different ways to do it, to uh, put this on as an applicator. Uh, you can use a brush. It's got to be a nice closed brush so it's uh, nice and tight and that'll um, keep down on the air bubbles. Or you can use a rag, cloth, even a sponge. Up on the top I actually cut a piece of sponge off and we were using that. Uh, for right now, because this is the first coat, I'm going to try it with just the brush. We won't put a lot on there because it might run through the gaps here in the board since we've done the stringers here. The gaps are closed as much as possible, but I don't have a planer to make sure that everything was completely straight. I had to go with the factory cuts, so the table might be off a little bit with some gaps in the where the boards came together here. Alright, so we're good there. Make sure you're in a nice, uh, well-ventilated area. If you're in a garage like this, you know, make sure it's cracked open. Got our cat out here. I don't think he's going to stay out here too long. All right, so just lightly dip your brush in there. And you kind of want to go with grain. I don't know how much we showed on the uh, first video on the poly portion of it. I don't know if I showed anything or not because we're trying to get this done. Uh, the weather hasn't been really uh, cooperative outside. A little too hot for us right now and the rain's been coming off and on just nice even strokes there that way it doesn't show any brush strokes or uh, doesn't have a lot of bubbles you can see how that's starting to come together do your edges just like you would the edge of the table the table's already been done several times so we don't have to worry about that and like i said i'm no professional on this this is just my opinions of what we found uh, doing this project I'm sure, like I said, the uh, experts will probably ding us on some of the ways we did this. But I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for a novice builder like me. But you have to have patience if you want to uh, have a nice project like this. You can see how that's starting to come out. And you just want to give it that wet look. Not too much, because you don't want to run it all over the place. We're working ourselves right across the table now. And you can kind of see the difference. Here are the legs we got here. 
Hopefully you can see those. These are a three rod design and they're going to be anchored in underneath the gear to the uh, stiffeners that I uh, built underneath the table. These are in a shiny black uh, powder coat finish and these are half inch thick so that should be plenty heavy duty for this table here. Uh, I've seen them out on the internet like I said for the 3.8 design and maybe at a later time if I feel like it we may do some like small uh, end tables for like some of the other chairs on the deck. And these run about $75 I think they were shipped to the house. Um, you can get these on uh, Amazon and eBay or some other various sites. I'll put links at the end of the video of this underneath the description for anything that uh, I can think of that'll help you um, but these are gonna look nice once they're done okay so now we move the table outside here on the deck and we're gonna go ahead and attach the uh, legs to it um, usually they recommend like two inches from the, the outside of your uh, table to come inside where you put your legs well I already did that with my stringers here so that's gonna make this really easy then because I've already basically got it all set up you're just gonna square it up there and you're going to pre-drill your holes here all around and then just go ahead and sink in your uh, your screws. Now my kit came with a bunch of screws. These are smaller screws. I'm going to try them out first and if they tear out for whatever reason I'll put in some longer deck screws like I used to build the table with. So let me go ahead and pre-drill these. And I'm stepping in a little bit off of the rounded part of the wood so it doesn't crack out. I just want to go in a little bit. Do a matter of about maybe like a half inch. We'll go all the way around and do that. Some of these positions are a little bit hard to get the drill into. So you may actually have to use a uh, Phillips screwdriver to run them in. And there we go. And to be honest with you, to run them in with a Phillips screwdriver wouldn't be the uh, worst thing to do because then you'll know they're in there nice and tight and you're not going to strip out your screws. Let's go ahead and sink this first one in, hold it. There we go. And I'll go around, I'll put them all in, and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so there's the uh, table completely constructed. All the legs are now attached, and we'll flip it up, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so that's it. That completes this project. Uh, we went ahead and we refurbished some uh, chairs and redid the padding on them. And here's the table complete. I think it really turned out nice. Hey, do me a favor, click that subscribe button down there. I appreciate it. That'll subscribe you to all the videos I have coming up on my channel. Hit that bell, that notification bell. That'll also let you know when a new video comes out. Please share with your family and friends. Go ahead and hit that like button. That lets YouTube know that you like our videos and we can uh, continue putting up more content. Hope everybody's doing okay with, with this COVID-19 situation. Good luck with your projects. Let me know how you make out. Take care.